Hello guys, today we are going to see an op amp based amplifier circuit which is the combination of non-inverting and inverting amplifiers and mainly used to minimize the common mode noise and interpret the differential signals. Yes, we are talking about the difference amplifier, also known as subtractor. Well, let's start. Let's take an example of a CAN signal. It is a differential communication signal, which comes like this. But how a particular system will understand this is a CAN high and this is CAN low? Because it is a differential signal, there is no ground. If you don't know what and how a CAN communication works, then you can check this playlist. It is quite helpful. So to face this problem, we use a difference amplifier. Well, if you remember about the basics, a simple op amp amplifies the difference between two input terminals and it gives as an output. But it has the open loop gain, which is too high. Let's take an example and consider an op amp which has the open loop gain of 5000. There is a differential communication signal whose difference ranges from 2 volts to 4 volts. And the input supply to this op amp is 10 volts only. Now, if we check the output signal with this gain, for 2 volt difference it should be 10,000 volts and for 4 volts it should be 20,000 volts. Well, that's not possible because the supply is only 10 volts. So for both signals this will give us 10 volts output. Then how could we know which is 2 volt signal and which is 4 volt signal? I hope you are getting it. So to avoid that, we have to use some closed loop mechanism like we use in inverting and non-inverting amplifiers. And that's where this difference amplifier comes into picture. Apart from amplifying the signal, it does one more important thing, which is to remove common mode noise. If you know what a common mode noise is, then comment down below. Let's collaborate together. If you don't, then I'll put this in the next video. Don't forget to watch that. Let's consider a differential signal like CAN communication coming at the input of this difference amplifier. We connect one part of the signal here and another to the inverting terminal. Now we'll design the difference amplifier for the signal like this. It is the combination of both non-inverting and inverting amplifiers. And this is how the circuit looks like. This is the basic feedback taken from the output to the inverting terminal of the op amp. The first signal is given to the inverting terminal and we provide another signal to the non-inverting terminal through a register divider network. And as usual, we need VCC and VE supplies when we need some sort of negative output. Well, these are the requirements of the circuit. The difference between two input signals ranges from minus 1.25 volts to 1.25 volts and output of the amplifier should be minus 2.5 volts to 2.5 volts where the amplifier should be capable enough to remove the common mode noise. So for that we have to consider its common mode rejection ratio which is the ability of an amplifier to reject a common mode signal. This capability of CMRR of an amplifier should be at least 50 dB. We need output from the amplifier in the range of minus 2.5 volts to 2.5 volts. In that case, 2.75 volt VCC and VE supplies are sufficient for our circuit. We want to use a particular op amp for a difference amplifier. Then we need to select an op amp and its peripheral circuitry based on the requirements. For example, the value of these input resistors should be selected considering the output impedance of the input source. The value of this resistor should be larger than the source impedance, but not too big or else it can degrade the phase margin of the circuit and add additional noise. We'll use a TLV6001 op amp in this circuit, which is a rail to rail op amp with a sleeve rate of 0.5 volt per microsecond. Now let's start with our design. There are four resistors and two input signals and considering this, the relation between input and output will be like this. 
good job. Well, let's make it a little simpler. If you make R1 and R2 same and R3 and R4 the same value, then our life would be much simpler. The transfer function doesn't look very happy, does it? In this, the gain of the amplifier will be R3 upon R1. As we saw, we have to select the input resistors considering the input source. Let's imagine the source impedance is between 60 to 100 ohms. So considering that, we'll select the input resistors as 10K. Now from our input and output requirements, we can calculate the gain of the circuit which can be calculated easily. And this will be 2 volts per volt. Well, from this gain, we can calculate the values of R3 and R4 which will be 20k. Now the important part is, we have to calculate the acceptable resistance tolerance. Usually the common mode voltage is very small or we can say close to ground level. So it is not the major source of the error. In fact, using a resistor which has less tolerance is more important. Because the more tolerance a resistor has, the more error it gives, which introduces unwanted noise. So to meet the minimum common mode rejection ratio, we can calculate the acceptable tolerance using this formula. Where epsilon is the acceptable resistance tolerance, G is the gain of the amplifier and alpha for a required CMRR should be 4. Now we can modify this formula to calculate the resistor tolerance. So the acceptable tolerance can be 0.24%. But for the safer side, we'll use 0.1% tolerance resistors. Well, if you don't want to do these boring calculations to find out the acceptable resistance tolerance, then you can refer to this table. It gives the information on how much gain which resistor tolerance provides a particular CMRR. We can also simulate this circuit using Tina TI software from TI. I've added the link of the simulation files in the description. Well, instead of a differential signal, we can use this circuit for a simple analog circuit like this as well, where this 0.1 ohm resistor is being used for current sensing in the branch. And we can give the signal to our different amplifier. And that's a wrap. I hope you picked up something useful from this video. The reference of this design is added in the description below. While checking the reference, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. It's right over there. I'll see you next time. Till then, stay hungry, stay foolish.